Assalamu alaikum, my dear brothers and sisters, and welcome to Politics and Debate. Inshallah, over the course of this series, we're going to be looking at a range of different topics, from looking at the debates of our masters, the Holy Prophet and the Ahlul Bayt, salam, as well as discussing current affairs which are important to us all. Inshallah, today we're going to be starting our series of discussions with looking at how to debate with, of course, the best of mankind, our Holy Prophet Muhammad al-Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Joining me with these discussions is our esteemed guest, Brother Sahar. Assalamu alaikum. So, um, I'm going to be honest about this. When it comes to debates, I myself, I'm a skeptic. My experiences with debates, I've always seen the two sides almost like in a shouting match. And it gets very personal and it's quite insulting in some ways. So I'm interested to know, um, how can debates be used as a positive thing to help e interfaith dialogue as such? Um, it goes without saying that um, um, a normal debate shouldn't be uh, the way that you describe it. Mm -hmm. um, um, people have to sort of put forward their reasoning uh, and argue with, or at least debate with one another without uh, it turning into a shouting match, as, as you put it. Um, and when we see the example set uh, uh, by uh, the Prophet, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, and uh, how he uh, conducted uh, mm, his debates with uh, other people, um, uh, whether Jews, Christians, atheists of the time, um, we see that uh, it was uh, very amicable, uh, it was respectful, and um, we see that even whether it was the, the Prophet or uh, the other Imams from Ahlul Bayt uh, even if the other party were to uh, uh, insult them mm -hmm. or use derogatory terms against them, they wouldn't respond likewise. Yeah. Um, they would make sure that uh, um, they keep the environment, the atmosphere calm and uh, they try to resort only to, uh, they try to use reasoning to refute their, the argument of the other side mm -hmm. um, without resorting to any of those conducts um, that uh, the other party may have mm -hmm. used. Occasionally they have used um, uh, insultive terms, but uh, normally, uh, according to reports and narrations that we've received, uh, they have really conducted uh, a, a calm, and uh, amicable and uh, respectable uh, um, conversation and deb debating the reasoning beha mm -hmm. between them. So of course, like with that kind of dialogue where the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Ahlul Bayt Alaihi Wasallam, when they were respectful to others, even though at times others were disrespectful to them, it creates feelings of compassion and love with one another and ultimately peace, which is what we want at the end of the day. And so, it get, correct me if I'm wrong, debates, were, were they something that the Prophet and the Ahlul Bayt wasalam, regularly engaged in? Well, they engaged in uh, debates uh, whenever people came forward uh, uh, to debate with them, to discuss or ask them questions. Um, they had um, other duties and uh, uh, other work to do, uh, various responsibilities, but uh, whenever people came uh, uh, to debate and discuss uh, various aspects of their belief with them, uh, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alayhi and uh, members of Ahlul Bayt alayhi wa sallam, they would, uh, they would uh, uh, discuss those issues and reply to the questions that they had whether they were Muslims or non-Muslims. And um, uh, yes, it's basically they were available and people could reach them easily uh, to, uh, especially people of, uh, of uh, other than the Islamic faith, they would um, 
be able to reach uh, the Prophet and the Imams of Ahl al-Bayt uh, to debate with them and discuss uh, uh, various issues of concern. Mm -hmm. Yes, so the Prophet and the Ahl al-Bayt they made themselves accessible to the people because they were proofs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the earth and ultimately they were there to educate the people of their time yeah. and also us today in the 21st century of course. Is there like any particular points of etiquette that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used and expressed during his debates? Um, first of all, he was um, very polite to them uh, and respectful. Uh, so these are the fundamentals of any debate. And uh, because we are saying that the people like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Imams Alayhi Wasallam they would adhere to such uh, uh, practices and um, people were never uh, um, offended by what the Prophet had to say or what the Imams had to say. And not only that, they were impressed by the reasonings. Uh, they either um, said, uh, let us think about it, you know, the, the reasons that you've given. Um, so basically they reached to a point where they don't want to, they probably didn't want to straight away admit that uh, they accept the other side. So they said, let, let us think about it. Or uh, there were occasions where on the spot people, they were so impressed by the reasoning that put, were put forward by the Prophet and the Imams, uh, and of course by their manners, uh, um, that uh, they were um, on the spot, they, they decided that uh, they were convinced by those arguments. And actually, on some occasions, they embraced Islam uh, forthwith in front of the Prophet or in front of the Imam mm -hmm. So that goes mm -hmm. to show that manners and politeness and respect, um, all these uh, help the debate. Mm -hmm. um, apart from the reasonings that they use and put forward, uh, it's the, the way they behaved was extremely important uh, to, the, to, the, to the debate and to the other side. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. yes. Um, I'm I've viewed a few debates online and also no, I've seen them in person in Speaker's Corner here in London. Mm. Um, many different sides and in particular I've seen debates with between Sunnis and Shias and often the conversation goes like the Sunnis that the Sunni person says oh worm but you, you guys, you just go and commit mutta all the time. And the Shia replies by saying, well, at least I don't blow myself up, like painting all Sunnis with the brush of Wahhabism. Surely this contradicts what the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is showing us here. Obviously debating uh, uh, is an art and therefore, especially the Shia of Ahl al-Bayt, the followers of Ahl al-Bayt they need to, uh, uh, amongst, uh, out of all the people, they need to be most uh, articulate in, in, in their uh, uh, debating skills mm -hmm. and in, their, uh, in the arguments that they put forward. And therefore, they, need to, they don't need, or they shouldn't um, uh, brush all people uh, with the same brush. And they need to uh, try to attract the other side not only through reasoning, but also through good manners mm -hmm. and uh, making sure that they shouldn't, uh, at the same time, they should make sure that they don't offend the other party. Uh, it's basically winning the hearts and mind, and uh, not only reasoning, but also you win the heart by, by good behavior and um, putting forward the sort of manners that will attract the other side. Mm -hmm. It, it really is amazing how, when you think of how the Prophet and the Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam, like some of the insults and some of the treatment that they had to face in their lives and how they managed to stay cool under pressure, mm. like mm. SubhanAllah, that's just a huge inspiration to me and I pray inshallah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides us all to be like them inshallah. inshallah. But um, going to the knowledge of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. What kind of um, arguments um, would he present to, for example, like leaders from the Jewish community, the Christian community, and also the polytheists and the atheists as well? Yeah. Um, just before I answer this question, um, you, you said that they, for, for example, when they discuss, uh, they um, 
throw insults at one another. Um, I, it reminded me of the case when um, uh, there was one uh, non-Muslim who was sort of debating with Imam al-Baqir alayhi mm salam. -hmm. And he started using derogatory terms uh, against uh, the mother of Imam al-Baqir alayhi mm -hmm. salam. And um, uh, instead of re responding um, likewise, uh, the response of Imam Baqir alayhi salam was that uh, if what you're saying about my mother is true, then may Allah forgive her. And uh, if what you're saying about my mom is not true, uh, that is you're accusing her of false things, then may Allah forgive you. Mm -hmm. And that was, uh, so instead of saying whatever, in behaving in a similar manner that he behaved towards th that person, he basically turned the table around mm -hmm. and he, the other person was really taken aback and he was surprised at the sort of answer that he received. So he really couldn't continue further, at least he didn't at that at that stage continue further with the debate because uh, he was uh, so impressed by this response. Mm -hmm. uh, he was attracted to it, he was very impressed by it and uh, he felt that uh, not only he hasn't been offended but he basically he was, the Imam was praying for him mm -hmm. in the sense that if you are wrong, if you are accusing my Imam of something wrong then may Allah forgive you. Um, so this is the sort of attitude um, uh, we need to have in debates and so on. Um, and to do that, we need to read more about um, the uh, actual debates that um, took place between the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, on the one hand, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and uh, the Imams of Ahlul Bayt and their opponents, or at least the, the people of other faiths uh, who came to discuss and raise various issues with them. It's very important that <coughs> All of us uh, um, read those debates, which are available in various uh, 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 sources of references, uh, to read those debates and uh, discuss them thoroughly, mm -hmm. and try to appreciate um, the significance of every argument put forward by the Imams, and also appreciate and uh, the uh, uh, importance of the conduct and the behavior they had, the responses they had in, in, in moral terms rather than the reasoning. So that we could see that at that juncture, when someone insulted that the Imam, for example, Imam Al Hassan is very famous for mm -hmm. the insults he was um, uh, subjected to, and the sort of response that he gave. Uh, it's very difficult. Sometimes we can see that if we put ourselves in those places, uh, in the shoes of Imam Hassan, for example, Imam Baqir alayhi salam, it's very difficult to keep your uh, calm, mm -hmm. and um, not only that, try to. Uh, address the issue by, um, uh, uh, um, if you like, pray, praying for him. Yes. Um, so it's very important that these debates of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam with the other side are carefully studied mm -hmm. and discussed between you know um, our own brothers, so that they can appreciate how this was done, and then engage in debates with whoever that they want to engage in. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned your question was about uh, uh, the Prophet uh, and his some of his debates uh, with other faiths, mm -hmm. members of followers of other faiths like uh, uh, Judaism, Christianity, and atheism, and so on. Um, there are various, uh, there are considerable amount of number of debates and so on which are published uh, uh, and, and available in, in sources of reference. Uh, and the, imam, the, the imams or the Prophet sallallahu they used to um, basically raise an issue or if they had an issue, they, the other side had an issue, they, uh, the imam would answer them or um, the, the Prophet would raise an issue which is uh, of controversy or at least of, uh, uh, between the two sides. Um, for example, in the case of um, uh, in his discussion with uh, members of the followers of the J uh, Jewish faith, um, they discussed uh, the issue concerning uh, Uzair, when it says in the Quran that uh, uh, the Jews say Uzair is the son of Allah. Okay. And um, uh, the Prophet addressed, tried to address this issue as uh, uh, why is he, how can someone who is uh, created and who was born uh, uh, from uh, another human being, 
can be the son of the son of God. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh, they said we, we don't mean it literally. We don't mean it that he is the son of God, but we mean that because of the miracles that he had, because he uh, revived and vivified the Torah for for the Bani Israel um, after it's been destro destroyed. Because of that miracle, out of respect, we say he is the son of God. And uh, the Prophet uh, came to say that if, he, if this was the reason, then uh, someone like uh, Moses, uh, someone like Moses, he should be, uh, he should, uh, the one who actually brought the Torah, mm. um, he should be considered the son of God as well. It makes sense. Because he mm. had a, and he had far more miracles than Uzair had or Ezra. Um, and um, they, went on to contemplate that, yes, we don't mean it in that way. So basically, it, it helped them uh, to reflect that this is not really the, uh, he is not really the son of God, and we shouldn't use this term. Mm -hmm. um, and at, at that stage, they said, we need to sort of think about this and reflect on this issue. Mm -hmm. So at least, and the Prophet invited them, yes, go and think about it, so that it will help you to refrain from saying what you're saying. Mm -hmm. uh, this, of course, I've, been, I've made it very short and concise. Mm -hmm. um, um, so this is one example when uh, the result of that debate was to help them to reflect on what they are saying, what they believe in. Mm -hmm. um, in um, at, at that stage, again, they were discussing with um, uh, the, the Prophet Sallallahu was discussing with the Christians mm -hmm. and uh, the notion of uh, uh, Jesus being the Son of God. Mm -hmm. um, was discussed and it, it was a bit more detailed in the sense that he, he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, if you like, qadim, which means uh, eternally, uh, he was eternal and uh, pre-existent, <coughs> pre-existent eternal and he, he, was, he was always there, he will always be there and w when we have a hadith that is uh, 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 someone which came into being like Jesus, then how can these two unite? Mm, yes. Does that mean that uh, uh, Jesus will acquire uh, the qualities of the um, eternal God? Or does God acquire the qualities of this uh, being which has now, w which is referred to as Hadith, now has come into existence? Mm -hmm. uh, which of course he said, this is not possible. Neither uh, the Hadith, the one who has come into existence can acquire the qualities of a Qadim, the one who's, who's everlasting, uh, uh, nor vice versa. Mm -hmm. um, That's a really wonderful insight, Doctor, and inshallah in the next upcoming episodes we can discuss more. But thank you so much for your insights. Inshallah we'll be seeing you again soon. Inshallah. But my dear brothers and sisters, please do stay tuned as next up, um, Sister Fatima is going to be discussing how to make your home more Islamic, inshallah.